Well, hey, and welcome to this week's episode of our Dive into the Psalms podcast. It's uh, We've had this summer podcast going for, I think, about six weeks now, mm-hmm. where we just yep. uh, go over uh, the different um, books in the Psalms or the, the chapters in the Psalms that we've been going yep. through all summer long. And uh, we just like to take a, a deeper look into it than mm-hmm. um, really than what we have time for on Sunday morning. Um, so if you don't know who I am, I am Craig Cunningham. I am the worship minister here, and I am filling in for Marion Clifton this week. <laughs> and I am Marion Clifton. I'm filling in for Brett Parker, who is no longer with us because he's on vacation. Yeah, vacation, <laughs> of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he is still with us, but yep. uh, just enjoying some time off with his family. So, yep, probably some uh, naps, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this past week, Marion preached, uh, mm. did a great job, uh, kind of looking over Psalms 119, which is the longest. Uh, chapter in the book of Psalms. Thankfully, he did not read the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, that would have been the entire message. <laughs> but uh, but uh, no, did a great job. So, uh, But really, he just touched on uh, a single verse from it and built off of that. So uh, real quick, I'm just going to read that back to you. Okay. Uh, the verse is 105. So uh, the verse says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So, you know, pretty straightforward. Just kind of built the message off of that, so yeah, um, yeah. So if you want, just uh, you want to give a little recap of what Absolutely. what that looks like. Um, so yeah, I actually started the message with um, discussing about like a word worth sharing, or, or no, a word worth like remembering or yeah, worth cherishing. Yeah, yep. Word worth cherishing. That's the word, not sharing. <laughs> um, and I, I I had so many memories that I kept thinking through. I was even talking to my wife Felicia about these, um, just like moments with people who are now gone and mm-hmm. just conversations I've had with them or voicemails that I have saved or um, even just conversations with our kids. I came to a bunch of people uh, that week, last week. Myself included. Yeah, and <laughs> I stopped by and I was like, so what's a word that you have that's like, or a phrase or something that's worth we're cherishing? Do you want to share a little bit about yours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he came into the office and uh, about I got you all choked up. Yeah, he about had me in <laughs> <laughs> about had me in tears. Uh, yeah, really, just from uh, you know one of the things I I talked about was and and Marion shared the same experience. But my my oldest, uh, he's three and a half. His name is Asher, and uh, you know, there's um, my wife Courtney and I will uh, we've both talked about it. But yeah, sometimes Asher will just come up to one of us and just really out of nowhere, no prompting. At all, he'll just come up and say, Dad or Mom, I love you. Mm. And just out of nowhere and always stops me in my tracks and I'm just getting yeah. <laughs> well, emotional. I'm like, oh, I love you too, buddy. <laughs> like it's, <laughs> yeah. it's just really sweet moments. Yeah. Maisie and Sloan do something. So the, the thing that gets me, uh, I didn't really think about it as as uh, one of those things until I started asking this question. I came home that that evening and uh, opened the door up. And every time you hear the, the kids hear the door swing at that time, they just – start screaming daddy daddy's home mm. and just like remembering those those sweet words um oh for sure yeah things you'll cherish forever but yeah i the reason i brought that up was because i was trying to connect us emotionally to what the psalmist is thinking about when it comes to the song like to the, to, the, to this psalm um and to scripture because he's emphasizing that um like as brett mentioned that these are kind of like the the highest form of human expression and like the first week he mentioned that and this psalmist in Psalm 119 is trying to express how he feels about Scripture. And I wanted to really capture, like, how he felt and how we should also feel about it. And he, he emphasizes it as he, he describes it as light. That's one of the illustrations that he uses. Um, like you said, it's the longest psalm, not just the longest psalm, it's actually the longest uh, chapter in the entire Bible. So it is a very lengthy text, and that that just highlights the, like, the, the um, profoundness and the um, amount that this psalmist cherishes the Word of God because he doesn't keep it short. He just goes on and on and on about uh, how he appreciates uh, the Word of God. And he even uses an acrostic and goes through every single letter of the Bible, so like emphasizes again and again how important uh, the Word of God is. Um, but overall, like we're all guided by something. Mm-hmm. That's really what he's getting at. We are all guided and influenced by something, and Christians— uh, and in his context, as as Jewish people, um, as, as people of the Word, uh, we are to be guided by Scripture. 
Mm -hmm. um, and that is our guiding source of light. And my, my main point was this, that the scripture is not some rule book uh, for the religious, for like the religious elite. I didn't say the religious elite in, in the <laughs> message, but like as I'm thinking about it, like we have this vibe about scripture where we think that scripture is just like, well, not everybody, I guess not everybody thinks this, but like me outside, when I was outside of the church, like I saw scripture as this big book that I didn't understand, I couldn't understand, something that was beyond me, that's something that was for the religious people, mm -hmm. not something for me that would be life giving. Um, and I was wrong. I was totally wrong. Uh, but it is our source of light in the midst of darkness. Helps us see in front of our face when we can't see, helps us put our feet on solid grounds. Um, and it's a word uh, worth cherishing. Uh, yeah, that's really sure. what I emphasized. Yeah. Yep, good stuff for sure. Um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and dive into. Yep, absolutely. Uh, we got we got kind of three main points here from uh, from your message. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the first one is I know you had a story associated with it. Um, yeah, was just the just the emphasis on that uh, on that verse where it says you know light into my path and and you kind of stress the uh, importance of uh, quite literally needing a light. Yeah. So I, I had a um a literally a lamp that I that I brought with me, but it was because um so I I did this internship in Haiti. It's about two two and a half months long. Uh, while I was in college, uh, I think it was my junior year. I think between junior and senior, year, I, th I think that's what it was. But anyway, uh, two two and a half months spent in Haiti, and so there were certain rules and things like that that as interns we would have to communicate to the short term teams. And one of those rules was always take a lamp with you or a light with you when you go onto the roof. Uh, there was like this stair, this set of stairs you could go to the roof, cool off in the evenings when the sun would go down. You'd hang out with your uh, your church group or you'd just go up there to relax. Uh, sometimes people would go up there to read scripture if it was early in the morning if, or if you had a lamp or something like that that you could take up with you. And um, we always emphasized always take a light with you. Mm -hmm. And there was a backstory to that. And that's what I shared this Sunday. And uh, the backstory was there was a group that went up, and this girl, I don't think she had her light with her, or someone in their group might have had a light. I don't really know exactly on that, but I do know that as she stepped down, there, there's always rebar sticking up uh, on, on structures in Haiti, uh, just so they can add on to, to the structures as um, either organizations expand or homes or families expand. They'll add layers to their houses, and they always want to keep that open, so they do that. And uh, so she went down from one step to the next, and her foot, she thought, got caught between two of these these pieces of rebar that's sticking mm -hmm. up. She couldn't get her foot out from between them, so they, they went and got a light, brought it over, and that's when she found out that her foot wasn't caught between them. It went up through the bottom of her foot Golly. and out towards the back of her leg. Um, and I, I shared that story because, like, we emphasized to her, not to mm -hmm. her, but, like, to other people, like, this is why you need a light. And yeah. in the same way, like, we need light on our paths. And if we're not serious about taking light with us, like, um, that danger, dangerous things can happen in our lives. Uh, sometimes simple, small things that aren't super dramatic, but th sometimes things that can be detrimental to our, our um, experience, to, to our relationship with God, to our relationship with other people. Um, it can be hard stuff. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, and that reminds me of, uh, yeah, your your story there. Yeah, for one, it's just a wild story. But uh, you know, obviously, whenever whenever it happened to the lady, you know, that's when they had to start implementing that rule, like, hey, you know, really take a a light with you. But it, it uh, we were talking a little bit ago, and it reminds me of. Uh, have y'all ever heard of that seasoning? It's called tahini. I think mm -hmm. I think it's, it's what it's called. The best. Yeah, really good. All the all the kids love it. They make you know, take their gummy worms and old and people put that like on. us. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, elder, <laughs> elder elder millennials like us. Uh, and I, I bought some several several years ago. I think it was the first time buying it, and which I knew was a seasoning for mm -hmm. food. And but on the on the on the lid of it, <laughs> I remember on just on 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 the lid it said. This is not candy, and I'm thinking, like, what did was there a lawsuit or something mm. that <laughs> like someone actually thought was candy, so now they have to imprint this yeah on every single one of their lids just so there's no confusion at all because mm. people have made lawsuits for goofy things like the Red Bull. Mm. I don't know if you heard about that one like probably ten years ago. Yeah. Somebody somebody got upset because Red Bull doesn't actually give you wings. Well, yeah. 
we all know that. But they're... speaking of disclaimers, this this podcast we we we, we probably forgot to mention as a disclaimer the, the California warning label that's on everything also applies to this podcast. <laughs> yeah. So be careful with your listening. Yeah. I'm only kidding. Yeah. That. But it seems like that, that uh, the California one, it was like on everything. Like I didn't know that like you could have it on a, a vegetable. Yeah. I don't know that it's actually on vegetables, me. but like it's like not everything. But like, yeah, yeah disclaimers. <laughs> it's a thing. Um, yeah, and for sure, funny. it's like the psalmist is trying to articulate like how much he appreciates and cherishes the word of God because it has been life altering and it has um, warned him where he could have gone mm-hmm. off. It's been an instruction in times of hardship. Um, and I, I think we all have faced realities of not seeing in front of our own face, like I had mentioned, and not knowing exactly what to do. Uh, I know for me, like, before I was a follower of Jesus, or that I consider myself a follower of Jesus, did not grow up in the church. We all, like, we believed in God, but I, I, I did not consider myself a follower of Jesus at that point. Um, and I just felt confused. And, mm-hmm. and lost uh, as a junior, senior in high school. And um, I would always ask this question. Um, uh, when someone would tell me the difference between right and wrong, um, I always like had this like devil, devil's advocate thought in my head of based on what? Mm-hmm. Like, where do you even get that premise? Like, why, why do you get to determine what's right and wrong? And I, it's a very nihilistic approach, if you're like familiar mm-hmm. with like that, like, philosophy of like everything kind of being mean- meaningless right um and like that you see it a lot today especially people questioning right from yes. wrong and, oh, yeah. and this type of stuff and it's definitely infiltrated culture even more than from when i was when i was younger but i asked those questions and i i was confused and lost and anxious because of it and when i first came to jesus like um i was just looking for wisdom i was mm-hmm. looking for guidance and i found so much more than that um, but it, scripture was the, the main foundation thing that really helped me and it, yeah. it changed your decision-making. That's, that's mm-hmm. one of the, the realities that we, when we, when we don't know how to like make the decision that's in front of our face. I know several times I've been in places where it's like, um, a season of transition or a season of moving, or should I take this job or that job or, um, do this thing or that thing? Are we, are we ready to have it like, um, a baby at this stage in our life? Yeah. Like these types, like big decision-making factors, like how do you make these decisions, uh, without wisdom? Mm-hmm. Um, and I find so much wisdom from scripture or facing adversity, tough times. Yeah. Um, I have just appreciated uh, a lot of people in my life that have looked to scripture to describe like how, how to navigate tough times. Um, and we, we need to do that because... Uh, we need light on our path. We really need it. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, especially uh, these days with just the constantly changing world. And mm-hmm. um, I think you and I can both agree that, uh, you know, just through different life things in general, whether you look on the Internet or wherever, it's it's obvious that people are doing their best to follow kind of whatever they kind of whatever they want. The world's following whatever it decides it wants to at that moment but yeah i think there's like a a culture like zeitgeist or like like i don't even really know what that word means but like (laughs) (laughs) it's a buzzword i think um but like what is the trending thing to follow oh yeah and it creates like demagogues it creates like uh phrases people can like trend on social media because they're advocate advocating for for this particular thing Mm -hmm. um and there's so i think there's that aspect but i think there's a lot of feeling driven and mm-hmm. I, I like that people are recognizing the emotions that they're processing through, but our emotions can be deceiving and can guide us around, down the wrong path. So I think as Christians, we need to be very careful like that we do experience our emotions. We do feel what we're feeling, yeah. um, but that's not what's going to guide us. That's yeah. not going to be the thing that makes our decisions for us. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. And just you know, speaking on that a little bit, I had this for maybe a couple minutes later, but... It reminds me, and me and Marion talked about this before, but there's a there's a fellow on social media, and I think he is he is a great um, just a resource for for speaking into uh, different, I guess, hot topics or hot button topics, and um, and a lot of times he goes by Mr. B, um, and and a lot of times you'll see him, he'll have a little coffee mug here, mm-hmm. and usually like a hat or something that says Jesus is King, but I'll have a red marker there. 
and his idea is he'll he'll show like a clip of somebody's yeah. you know say their hot take or whatever usually something um just from uh somebody who's maybe either not a christian or just even christians like yeah. sometimes they'll break down yeah and christians and you know ones who are well-meaning or ones that are just trying to push yeah. you know say an agenda or something but um he what i like about him is uh he'll always come at it uh from a very respectful way but he it's does. respectful but firm you know he's it's it's obvious that he has planted himself uh as scripture being his guiding light so yeah. then and and that way he's able to um you know shine light on the darkness and get and give some good practical mm-hmm. uh information um uh, that will kind of combat against these worldly things cuz there might be somebody who's just kind of scrolling TikTok right now maybe they're strong in their faith maybe they're not and they might see one of these um person's videos with some you know we'll call it a, just a hot take or whatever mm-hmm. and they might not know how to discern that and they might say oh that's that sounds it sounds good mm-hmm. or whatever um uh, but really it's you know maybe not yeah uh, maybe it goes against um the bible but um so he's you know just looking at his videos uh he he is a great resource for you know some of those um Absolutely. videos that pop up and and just kind of inspiration to us to. I like I like that he's not like in your face like you need to believe what I believe, but he's yeah. simply presenting like this is what scripture teaches us. Yes, and yeah. I think apologetics needs to shift more toward that mm-hmm. that style, especially to reach like the TikTok generation people who yeah. are actually listening oh, to that yeah. kind of stuff. They don't want you to shove down their throat like, "Hey, believe what I believe." They want they don't mind different worldviews. Like younger yeah. people don't like. So it's like just share what you believe and why you believe it. And a lot of times I think younger people, they don't know what they believe. Mm-hmm. Even some old, a lot of older people I've met, like they don't know why they believe what they believe. Mm-hmm. They just believe it because their their parents or grandparents believed it. Yeah. They don't know where the scripture verse is. They've not done the discernment themselves from scripture. But scripture should be our, our, our guiding light. Like it Absolutely. should be the thing that guides us in our life. And I, I, as I was researching for this message, I discovered that uh, only 35% of, Ameri- of Americans now read their Bible um, once a week. Oh, wow. Um, and that starts at a higher point with baby boomers, about 34%, and then drops all the way down to, uh, to less than 22% for millennials. And that was as of 2014. Right. And then what I found even farther was during COVID, this this is the, a report that came out in 2022, 2022. Do we say 2022 or do we say 2022? I don't know. When did we stop <laughs> saying that? Um, but anyway, in 2022, um, the statistics came out that 26 million Americans during COVID either mostly or completely stopped reading their Bible. Golly. Um, that's huge. Yeah. Um, and I'd be interested to see, like, how did that impact their lives, uh, mm-hmm. especially for those if, – if there were those that used it as their guiding source. Or maybe those were people on the fringe. I don't know. Maybe there's are people that didn't really like, uh, weren't using it as their guiding uh, center for their lives. Um, but one, a couple of things that I, I talked about this this past Sunday was um, Jewish culture and how they value scripture and how there's this strong pattern of memorization, mm-hmm. uh, whereas most kids in Judaism, especially in ancient times, um, I don't really know as much in mo- modern times. A lot of my studies were in more ancient times. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, in ancient times, for sure, it was very common for uh, Jewish children to memorize um, the first five books of the Bible. So Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and just memorize them, like Leviticus included. Yeah, like that's... the entire outline of the book of law, like the legal code, do this, don't do this. Um if you do this, do this to help purify yourself. And like it, some yeah. of it's narrative, but some of it's really dry. Yeah. At what age did you, I can try to remember, what age did you say do you think? Oftentimes they... about 10 years old, God, but usually <laughs> at, at least by 12 or 13 years old, because then you would transition to the next form of like, um, of teaching or education, unless you were going to go into like the workforce and you'd begin apprenticing under um, like who you're going to learn to like learn a trade under because that's mm-hmm. kind of the way their schooling system was set up at least right. during the time of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also another fun fact about Jewish culture is at the center of a synagogue 
is a scroll of scripture. And like, they don't just print copies of scripture. Like they take an incredible detail to um, keep this sacred nature of scripture to the point that they handwrite every single copy of scriptures in those scrolls. And uh, it takes a lot of time to do. It takes about a year to do. And it's really costly because like it's yeah. supporting that person's full profession to sit there and copy with ink this uh, this text. So it takes about a year and it costs somewhere between thirty to a hundred thousand dollars to do. Like they have to ritually wash before they even write. Wow. Um, it's it's an insane process for them to do. But then I think about like even the church that thinks that we value scripture and like it really it barely even like I mean, I'm sure there's some legalism that probably creeped into that where mm-hmm. it's like we have to do this. But, like, if, if if there was the heart there where that tradition was because they cherished the Word of God, if we could elevate Scripture to that point in our in our day and age um, as millennials, as Gen Z, as Gen X, or and as baby boomers and Gen Alpha even, if you're watching mm-hmm. this to the younger youngest generation, um, the Bible is our light, and we need to elevate um, scripture in our lives, um, you know. Yeah, lots, lots of good stuff mm. for sure. Uh, but I I started thinking about this, and I wish I could have spent more time on this. Mm. Um, I think we struggle um, to dive into Scripture, uh, whether it's because of time. Sometimes we say it's a time issue. Mm-hmm. Honestly, it's a scheduling issue. We just yeah. we did not set aside the right the proper time, and I no. I mean, honestly, like for people who are stay at home parents, like that is a chaotic position to be in. Oh yeah. Um, and so, like, we need to be very intentional about like um, trying to set aside times that we can um, spend in scripture. And um, another one is understanding what we're reading. I know that scripture can be really overwhelming and there's some things that we might not understand or how things connect. So that can be overwhelming. And another thing is people get bored. Like yeah. if you're like doing an annual reading plan and you're in Leviticus for <laughs> a few weeks, like right. the majority of Bible studies fail in Leviticus. Yeah. Like it's not a fun book to read. Right. It's a powerful book to read if you understand the context of it and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, like, it's easy to lose interest when we lose sight of the goal of all of it mm-hmm. and lose sight of the narrative. And we've been talking through some of that stuff in, in the teen ministry, but um, it's right. what we need. We, yeah, we need Scripture sure. to be our guiding light. Yeah, and some of it just seeing at face value and, yeah, without seeing, you know, why uh, each thing is being said in Scripture. Yeah, without, without I guess, yeah, without knowing uh, the why of it, it just might just be words on a paper. Mm-hmm. So... Um, yep, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and lastly, um, yeah, you want to talk about, uh, just, uh, um, yeah, this, this final part and trying to remember exactly. Yeah. So I was going to share some of this, the statistics that I shared, um, this Sunday as the results that the Bible, um, the, the impact that reading mm-hmm. scripture has on us. And, and there's a little thing I want to, I want to emphasize and clarify on as well. Um, there was a, a study a psychologist did that talked about the findings that they discovered if you read the Bible four times a week or more. Um, and they found that feelings of loneliness drops 30%. Anger issues drop 32%. Bitterness in relationship drops 40%. Uh, and this is where it gets a little controversial, and I'm, this is where I want to clarify some stuff. Alcoholism drops 57%. Uh, feelings of feeling spiritually stagnant drops 60%. Sharing your faith jumps 200%. Discipling others jumps 230%. Um, scripture clearly has an impact on our lives. Yeah. Um, I know it's had an impact on mine, and it's it's definitely helped feelings of loneliness. It's helped when I have felt cooped up anger, like relieve those things and gain perspective and humble myself <laughs> um, a lot of times. Um, it's repaired bitterness in relationships. I've seen these things happen. Um, but the controversial part I wanted to clarify and spend a little bit more time kind of outlining is like when we talk about things like alcoholism, when we talk about things like mental health, which anger, loneliness, anxiety, all of these things, um, they're, 
they, they can be very touchy topics because um, mental health is a serious thing, like a very serious thing that is going on and there's a mental health crisis that yep. is very serious. And I don't want to like paint this picture that like because you read scripture, it's going to fix every single one of your problems. My point is if you read scripture, it's going to help you bear those problems. Right. It's going to help you know how to navigate those challenges and those struggles. It's going to help you understand when I feel angry, it might the feeling might not go away because like now at this point there's a chemical response that's going on inside of you where you feel angry. Same thing happens with anxiety. Sometimes mm -hmm. things just trigger your anxiety and there's a chemical response inside that can cause things as severe as a panic attack. And just to throw scripture at it sometimes doesn't fix the emotional side of it, but it does help you gain perspective of it. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there, there is aspects of it where there's chemical imbalances. Sometimes people like do need to speak to therapists. They do mm -hmm. need um, to have professionals walk beside them. And sometimes it is serious as medication. Uh, depending on a person's issues, um, but that I do believe that Scripture helps. Yeah, it it, it is our guiding source. Um, I do believe God can heal, but I'm not going to be one of those people that says like, "Don't seek help if you yeah. need it." <laughs> yeah. So I did want to clarify that for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if yeah. you if you're struggling with mental health, that is it is okay to um, ask for help and seek those. Uh, seek those counsels as as needed so mm -hmm. yeah nothing nothing wrong with that but yeah for sure some of the anxious thoughts and uh you know um you know i think i think we would both probably both agree as parents uh becoming you know mean mean you're more recent parents than yeah than brett is our kids are about you know roughly the same age yeah. and i'll tell you there are different there's a whole different level of anxiety now with having two kids you know i got a three-year-old and a mm -hmm. one-year-old one-year-old uh there is a whole new level of anxiety and um and sometimes i just think think too like if something were to happen to my kid and that's that this is probably a whole, whole other topic mm -hmm. uh you know a whole other podcast but you know just um having having hope in some of those dark times or if i have those dark thoughts you know if something happened to one of my children just knowing that god is still good and, yeah. uh, you know, with, you know, like I said, that's, that could be something for a whole other topic, but you know, it's, it's, mm. uh, yeah, it, it's, it's hard to navigate through life sometimes. And, um, to me, it really just, um, also solidifies the fact that the word, uh, is a lamp into our feet, a light yep. into our path. And, um, I think, I think without that guiding light, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. what are we, what are if, we holding on to? If scripture's not guiding us, we need to ask the question, what is guiding us? What mm -hmm. is influencing us? What is directing us? What is our comfort in times of hopelessness? Um, we need, as Christians, we need to root ourselves in scripture Yeah. Uh, for ourselves, for the next generation. Like our, our cultural center is no longer like assumed as a Christian moral perspective. Um, that's a whole nother topic. That's not me critiquing culture. Mm -hmm. That's me just like stating a fact, like, Christianity is not at the cultural center. So as Christians, we need to be aware of that and not assume uh, our own people even believe the roots of Scripture um, because for the longest time, we assume people already knew it. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to be serious about diving into Scripture, learning it, rooting our, our hearts, our minds, our souls in Scripture itself. Yeah. Um, and I think that will change our lives. Yeah, I truly sure. do. Absolutely. That's all I got. Yeah. I think. Yeah. But um uh, I think that's yeah, pretty well Psalm 119. Mm -hmm. So, um yeah, been been a been a great discussion and uh So yeah, um if if you are uh new with us, uh if you do not have a church home and you're looking for somewhere, you're in the Brown County, Claremont County, Adams County, um you know, whatever Butler County. Butler County. Yeah. Northern uh, if you, Kentucky. If you, yeah, if you really want to travel that far, <laughs> if you want to travel that far, Western uh, West Virginia. Wow, we are <laughs> really going I'm far kidding. now. <laughs> um, but but yeah, if you're if you're in the area and you're looking for a church home, uh, we would love to have you. Uh, love to get to talk to, with you. Love to have you worship with us here on Sunday mornings. Uh, we have services at 10 a.m. here on Sundays, mm -hmm. and we have uh, childcare uh, available from. Um, 
yeah, nursery up through sixth grade or mm-hmm. fifth grade for the children's ministry, and then sixth through twelfth grade for the student ministry. Yep. And um, yeah, we just have a have a great time over here. So um, yeah, would love to love to see all students sometime. But uh, yep. otherwise, we'll be back next week uh, with Psalm one twenty one. Mm-hmm. So um, brought to you by. Me, Mr. Yes. Craigles over here. <laughs> oh yeah, so I'll be preaching uh, next week, and then uh, Brett will finish this out on um, the last week of July mm-hmm. in Psalm 150. So, um, yeah, that's that's about all we got. So we will see you next week or at a service on Sunday mornings. Later. Oh,